enter into a time of worship, let's just let's just bow our hearts before the Lord and let's just let's just welcome him into this place. Heavenly Father, we just we come before you tonight, Father, and we're just so thankful, Lord. For Tuesday nights, Father, we are thankful, Lord, that we have a place, Lord, that we can come, Lord, to escape the world, Father, and just to just to bask in your presence, Father, and just to worship you, Father, and to grow closer to you, Father. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just touch our hearts tonight, Father. I pray that tonight, Lord, that we would just offer ourselves completely and wholly to you tonight, Father, with nothing holding us back, Father. Whatever it is, Lord, that we experience on a on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis, Lord, at school, at home, Father, we put that all aside, Lord, all this school stress from homework, Lord, and maybe we're experiencing family troubles, Father. We just lay it all aside, Lord, so that we can just put our 100% focus on you tonight, Father. Father, because you're so worthy of it all, Father. Tonight we worship you, Father. You are worthy of all of our praise, Jesus. We love you, Lord.
worship you tonight, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you're greater for us. Father, we believe in you, Jesus. You're greater than all of our problems, Lord, and all of our mistakes, all of our failures, Father.
Let's sing that bridge again. Let's sing I believe in you. And I believe in you. I believe you rose again. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Sing
And God just brought me to Matthew 6, which is a famous chapter uh, in the Bible that talks about worry. And God just began to convict me about some worry that I've been doing in my own personal life. But I just really felt as I was um, just worshiping God there and just kind of getting lost in his presence. Um, I really felt like God just would just begin to speak to me about sharing Matthew 6.33. And what Matthew 6.33 says, um, well, actually, um, let me read it to you because um, it's, it's powerful. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Let me repeat it one more time. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I love this song because it reminds me of heaven, and, I, and, I, and every time I think about heaven, I begin to think about the fact that in heaven there's no pain. In heaven, there's, uh, there's, no, there's no bills to be paid. In heaven, amen, right? In heaven, there's no, there's no famine. There's no hunger. There's no, there's no turmoil. There's no war. The fact that heaven is a perfect place gives me hope. And it's so much so that even Paul calls it our blessed hope, right? But I just, this morning, God began to speak to me. He began to talk to me about the fact that I need to make sure that my eyes are always focused on his kingdom. I need to make sure that, that when, I, when I come to life's problems, and we all do, maybe you're here and you have certain problems about, you know, in, in high school you have difficulties, maybe it's at home, maybe it's personal, maybe it's internal, whatever the problem may be, I know that when I begin to focus my eyes on the kingdom and what is eternal, and I begin to focus on, on heavenly things, and I begin to focus on heaven itself, my problems begin to fade away because... I'm not living for this life. See, what most people forget is that I'm passing through here. As great as, as earth is, and, and, and there's some awesome things about this world, some great foods that I love to, to, to enjoy with company, I love all that. And if I'm not careful, I, I'll, I'll begin to think about that. This is all that matters, this life right here. But the Bible is clear, and the more that you read it, the more you, you understand that Jesus isn't living for this moment right here. Jesus isn't living his life. Jesus doesn't even call us to live our lives for the, the small amount of time that we are here. In comparison to infinity, in comparison to forever, the small amount of time, which is maybe 80 years, 90 years, 100 for those, those of you guys who are real tough, it's, it's, but a, it, it's but a vapor, James says. And so I want to challenge you, if you guys could just close your eyes right now, everyone in this place and because the thing is we all we all struggle it doesn't matter when you're high school middle school out of college in college have a job have kids doesn't matter what it is in life you're always going to find you're always going to find different problems are going to come up and your job sometimes when you don't know what to do with the problem is to just say god i trust you and i'm going to focus on your kingdom because it says that when i begin to focus on your kingdom all these other things shall be added unto me so I'm going to challenge you right now. Just take a second, and then I'm going to say, and then I'm going to pray for everyone. We're going to get started with tonight. But I just want you to, for a second, just, just to begin to just put the problems of this world to the side, and to just begin to refocus your mind on what really matters, on the fact that you're not here forever, and that this, that this time, and, and, and that this time that you have here won't be forever, but that instead you're going somewhere where there's no pain. You're going somewhere where Jesus is going to be. God, we just pray that you would refocus our minds, God, that you would, that you would help, that you would help us, Lord God, that you would just change the way that we think, God. God, that we would think about eternity, God, more and more each day, God. God, that you would stamp eternity into our hearts. God, that you would just help us to focus, God, on the things that matter, Lord. That you would remind us that each day, God, each day that we face problems, Lord, in this world, God, that we would be reminded, God, that we're not living for the now and the here, Lord God, but that we're living for the, for the everlasting, God, that we're living for, for heaven, Lord God, that we're living for eternity, Lord Jesus. God, I pray that you would remind us, God, that we're here, God, to build your kingdom, God. Not to build a comfortable place for ourselves, God, 
But I pray that as, as you challenge us each and every day, God, I pray that you would just, God, keep that in the forefront of our minds, God, that we are here, God, for your kingdom, God. God, I pray for everyone who's here tonight. I pray right now that you would just, God, speak to everyone who came here, God, with questions, God. God, I pray that you would just prepare each and every one's heart to receive, God, the, uh, the wisdom, God, that we're going to impart tonight, Lord God. God, that you would just speak through our panelists tonight, Lord, whether they know it or don't, God. I pray right now that you would just, God, use words, God, that are specific, God, to people, God, who are in this audience, Lord. God, I pray right now for divine appointments tonight, Lord. God, we pray that you would speak, God, to, to the problems, God, that some of these students may be facing, Lord. God, we pray for tonight, Lord. We pray, God, that your will would be done, God, and that you would just remain in our presence, God, that you would remain in this place, Lord God. God, for in your, in your presence, there's peace. In your presence, there's, there's peace of mind. There's wisdom, Lord. There's love. There's grace, and there's mercy, Lord. God, we thank you for what you're going to do tonight. We thank you, God, for everyone who is able to make it here tonight, Lord God. And we pray that you would have your will. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And everyone said, amen.